Hey what is going on guys welcome back to the channel in this video we will talk about json which is one of the most important concept that you should learn as an android developer or as a web developer so i'm going to go over what json is why should you learn the concept and all the syntaxes involved in the json and at the end of the video i'm going to go through the different examples of json so make sure you stick around till the end JSON is known as JavaScript Object Notation. It's a standard file format that is widely used across the internet to transmit data from a server to a web page or to an app. For every single API that you will access to retrieve data or to write something to the server, JSON is pretty lightweight and easy to read as compared to XML. If you would like to work as a web developer or an app developer, you will be dealing with JSON all the times, whether it's creating the API or consuming the API. Now that we understand what JSON is and why it is important. As we know, JSON is used to representing the data. And there are a certain types of data a JSON can hold. So it supports string, number, and these numbers can be in any format, whether it's an integer number, float, double, long number or even scientific notation number so the format makes no distinction among them but while implementing json in other languages we may need to encode numbers differently also it supports boolean which can be either true or false it supports object an object is the most used type in json and it allows you to represent values that are key value pairs so you give it a key and a value of any type, string, boolean, numbers, any of those different types can be the value for a key. Now arrays, which can be a list of any types that we have talked about. Plus the next type, which is the final type null, which essentially stand for nothing or void. So these are the type that a JSON supports. Now let's dive into an example and see how we should create a JSON file along with its syntaxes. So what you need to do is to create a JSON is just create a new file uh, then give it a name with .json extension like student.json. Now we can create objects followed by opening and closing curly braces. And inside of that, we can put all our key value pairs that makes up our objects. And every single one of these key value pair, the key must be surrounded by double quotes, followed by a colon, then the value for that key. And the value can only be surrounded by double quotes when we are using a string. But for numbers or booleans, we don't use double quotes. And then if we have multiple key value pairs, we need commas for separating every single one of our key value pairs, similarly to how we create an array in other programming languages. For example, one of our students name is Jason. So we put the key inside a double quotes, then colon, and then we put the value again inside a double quotes because it's a string. Finally at the end we will put a comma because we have other key value pairs for that student. For example if we wanted to use the age as another property, we'll put age in double quotes followed by colon and then put that student's age. We may also have height property that holds the height of the student with a fractional value. Also, let's say we wanted to have a boolean properties which will track that the student is present or not. So we put the key is present in a double quotes followed by a colon and then the value either true or false. So you can see except these three properties only this name properties value is surrounded by double quotes because it's a string. So this is how we define objects in JSON. 
Okay, now let's take a look at how we define objects inside an object. For example, we put address as a key followed by a colon, then opening and closing curly braces. Now inside this body, we will define the rest of the properties or attributes like street, city, state and postal code. So by doing this, we can actually structure our JSON dataset. Now coming to our final type, array. In JSON, we put the key in double quotes followed by colon, then opening and closing square bracket. Now inside this bracket, we put a list of data, whether it's an ordered list of string, numbers, or even objects. Also note that each data should be separated by a comma like we do in other programming languages. As you can see in this example, the key is favorite books, which is an array itself containing a list of books name. And this is a simple string type array, right? So if we need to have the author name along with the book name, in such situation, we should define a list of objects. So we can start with opening and closing curly braces because this is how we define objects in JSON. Then create a property like book name. Finally, create another property for author name. All right. Now we can say we have added an object in favorite books array and we can have multiple favorite books. So we put a comma after the closing curly brace then create another object with the same properties. Here is another example that begins with a square bracket. Means this is an array where we have a list of objects and each object is containing the same properties. Also if you notice there we have a null value assigned with the second element's property called height. So sometimes in some situations we may need to set the null value as well if the value of that property is unknown or we don't want to assign anything for that. So I conclude by saying in JSON we define objects by using curly braces and for array we use square brackets. Simple. And that's all we have in JSON. So in the next video I will show you the way to make use of the JSON in Android Studio. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with me here on the Daily Coding Tutorial channel. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop your message in the comment box. Also, if you feel this video helped you a little bit, hit the like button, share with your friends and subscribe for more content. Thanks again for watching guys. See you soon in the next one.